A community is more than a series of streets or houses. We don't see the neighbors. You know, we're all busy with work and you go home and you don't see them walking around outside. Just Please. never see them. And especially living in a home like we live in where we can't even see the front street. As the kids grew up, yeah. went away, the contact with neighbors uh, disappeared. A friend of mine on a neighboring street said, Marky, you'd better get your block in order because if there's an earthquake, we're not going to come and take care of you. <laughs> The 1989 San Francisco earthquake was a wake-up call. In a disaster, there are never enough professionals to go around. In response, the nearby city of Sunnyvale began to organize and train residents. You will be the patient, uh, Sharon, if you lie down here on the tarp and tie them firm. But my name is John Smithson. I'm chairman of the first aid committee. And my, our job is to take care of injured people during a disaster. I'm Bonnie Jansen. I'm on the search and rescue committee, and our job is to go in and see if anyone's trapped inside their homes and help them find a way to get out. My name is Christine Sullivan. I'm in charge of the shelter committee, and what we do is we set up a shelter for adults or children after a disaster who might need care. There's even some paperwork all about me forms, who you are, where you live, who's at home during the day, what you look like. Could we take your picture over here? Can you smile? Okay, now let's All this information is vital to search right? and rescue. What I've been thinking about this week is how grateful I am that someone else does feel such a responsibility to me personally in the neighborhood. And so this has really, I think, gotten everybody together to get to know each other a little bit. We really have a great neighborhood now. We got it all done. First steps count. When we get together in a first aid class, in a chorus rehearsal, or a farmer's market, we lay a foundation of goodwill on which any citizen can build. This magic of participation happened in Missoula, Montana. My wife and I were having dinner in Spokane, and we had a few minutes while we were waiting for our table, and I went to ride the carousel, and then it just came over me like a wave that these were hand-carved wooden horses. And I thought, what kind of a person would carve wooden horses for a living and make these wonderful things? And I came to realize they were people like my grandfather. They were immigrants who came to this country and just fell in love with these things the same way I did. And those were the people that amazed me, the people that could work with their hands. I, you know, all my life I've worked with my hands, and I'm a cabinet maker by trade. But this is it. I mean, once you see something come to life out of wood, truly come to life, and, and they're not blocks of wood, they're, they're my children. The first four horses I carved by myself, and I had the carousel frame, I decided to hold a carving class, hoping I could find people to help me carve the ponies. And the class filled up in 10 minutes with a waiting list of 100 people. Thousands of people pitched in. The town donated the land. Students raised a million pennies for ponies. Groups sponsored horses. Uh, you got the undercuts coming OK? Get this undercut. I didn't do this side. I did the yeah. other side. OK. People come at least once a week. For, for four years, these people have been coming here working on a carousel. And there's another group tomorrow night, and the night after that, and the night after that that's as diverse as this group. And then on the weekends, they'll come in in any mixture of that. And these people are amazed that they can carve a wooden pony. They're amazed that someone somewhere else can carve the leg for their horse, and it fits their horse. And when you bring all these people together in one place, you realize that there's some of those people have never even met the other person. And yet there's that kinship that flows through every one of them. These people were bound and determined to give their community a gift. And it was no small gift. There's no other community in America that has a gift like this. That is a truly community-made carousel. And you could go into another community 40 miles down the stream and they wouldn't know and wouldn't care, and they might think a carousel was the dumbest thing in the world for a community to be involved in, and why would a community want something like that? 
But this community believes that a gift to itself of a carousel is a healing thing for a community. And it makes the people in this community say, if we could do a carousel and no one else can do a carousel, think of all the other wonderful things that can happen. In our democracy, sometimes we take a wrong turn. When the West was settled, pioneers systematically killed off predators in order to make the territory safe for livestock. By the early 1900s, the wolf was gone from its natural habitats, like Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is the only place in North America that has every plant and animal species that was here when Europeans hit the shores of this country, with the exception of one. And I have to ask myself, you know, don't we deserve one place that is whole, one place that is totally wild? The Endangered Species Act requires the government to protect and reestablish vanishing animals like the wolf. Federal officials drew up a plan to capture packs of wolves in Canada and reintroduce them to the Northern Rockies and Yellowstone. This time, the citizens howled the too familiar refrain, not in my backyard. They're threatening our heritage. We don't want them here. People are both drawn to the wolf and afraid of the wolf. They're drawn to it because they recognize something magnificent and wild. Uh, we're frightened of the wolf because we realize that we don't control them. And uh, they're scary even though they don't harm us. Nonetheless, they're very, very scary because we feel when we look into their eyes that there is something completely apart from us who does not really care about our purposes in the world. We got rid of the wolves. We also got rid of the bed bugs and the fleas, you know. And some things just don't don't belong back. I think maybe they got the best wishes in, in at heart. Don Tolman and his family raised cattle in Clark, Wyoming, just east of Yellowstone Park. The ranch has been in the family for generations. Despite promises to pay for any losses, Tolman, like many ranchers, believes there's no place for the wolf here. The chance of a calf surviving out here by itself, if the wolves spot it, are really next to zero. That's how they, that's how they survive. Wolves have got to eat just like anything else, and they're going to survive on, on what I produce. And I can't afford them. It'll put me out of business. Simple as that. You'll hear a lot of old stories about how wolves were just decimating livestock herds and that kind of thing. And I think it's really important to put that in perspective, that 100 years ago, there weren't any other big game animals around. We got rid of all the deer, the elk, the bison were deliberately exterminated, partly to make room for livestock. The large predators that were left had no choice but to feed upon livestock. So a lot of it was a perception at the time that wolves were evil, always attacked livestock, and therefore every dead livestock was due to a wolf. People seem to forget that Yellowstone was set aside for the enjoyment of the people, not grizzly bears, not wolves. After 100 public hearings and written comments from 160,000 people, opinion is still deeply divided. Hello. My name's Hank Fisher. I'm the regional representative for Defenders of Wildlife. We're a national... The reason the Fish and Wildlife Service is to such a great extent to hold all these hearings and give people a real chance to talk about this issue, learn about it from both sides, is this is part of our governmental process for everyone to debate important issues a lot. And we've been debating wolf recovery for 20 years now.